Hi, I'm Vaidehi. I'm so excited because today I'm going to tell you all about finding a path through a graph. The story of graph theory is a pretty interesting one because it all started with trying to find a path through a graph. If you need a quick refresher on graph theory and the graph data structure, be sure to check out season one's episode on graph theory. Graph theory and the branch of mathematics called graph theory was created by someone named Leonard Euler back in 1735. The story of how Leonard Euler invented graph theory actually dates back to an old town called Konigsberg. That town had seven bridges, and the interesting problem that Leonard Euler was trying to solve was trying to figure out how to walk through all the seven bridges in the town only once. To learn more about the story of Konigsberg and how Euler went about approaching the problem of graph theory, check out my video series, Bite-Sized. But how did he go about approaching the Konigsberg problem? Well, in order to answer that, we first need to go over some important terminology. First, a graph is a data structure that's made up of two parts. We have nodes, which are also called vertices, and edges, which are also called links. The edges connect the vertices that make up the graph. There are also some different ways of classifying graphs themselves. We can classify a graph by looking at the types of edges that it has. A graph with edges that have no directionality to them is called an undirected graph. This is in contrast to a directed graph, which has edges that do have some directionality. We can also classify graphs by their nodes themselves, not just the edges. When we classify a graph by its nodes, what we're really doing is looking at the nodes and who their neighbors are. Every single node in a graph could be connected to another node, depending on if it has edges that are linking it or not. Adjacent nodes are nodes that share a common edge. In other words, they're neighbor nodes. There's an edge connecting them. The reason adjacent nodes become important is because we use the adjacency of a node to determine the degree of the node itself. When we say degree, what we mean is the number of neighbor nodes that the node has. So the degree of a node is the number of nodes that are adjacent to it. Here's an example graph where all of the different nodes have varying degrees, and we can see how the degrees change how we talk about the node. For example, we have this node, D. D has only one neighbor, meaning it has only one edge connecting it to another node that is adjacent to it. Its neighbor is node C. So we can say that D has a degree of one. Another way of talking about this is by saying that D is an odd degree node. Similarly, node E has three nodes adjacent to it, F, A, and C. It has a degree of three. However, node F has only two neighbors, node B and node E. Node F is an even degree node. So we can categorize a graph by the nodes in the graph as well as the edges in the graph. But there's one more way that we can talk about graphs too. And this third way actually has a lot to do with Euler's Konigsberg problem. His problem was really a graph traversal problem. When most people talk about traversing through a graph, what they're really talking about is finding a path through the graph. A path is just a way of walking through the graph, starting at one origin node and ending up at a destination node, 
while traversing through some edges along the way. A path in a graph just represents a way to travel from one node to another. For example, you might want to find a path between two nodes starting at node 1 and ending at node 6. There are lots of different paths that you can sometimes take in a graph, but a path can be any set of ver edges that connect vertices leading from the origin to the destination. In this example, we could start at 1, our origin node, Go to 2, head over to 3, walk over to 4, come back to 1, which would be our fifth node at that point, and then end up at 6. Notice that in a path, you can repeat vertices. We're not even talking about the shortest path here. We're not even talking about the most efficient. We're just talking about any path that allows us to get from node A to node B. But when Euler was trying to find a way to walk through every bridge in Konigsberg, he was trying to find a special kind of path. He was trying to find a simple path through these bridges. A simple path is a path where no nodes, no vertices, are repeated. So for example, in this graph, if we were trying to find a path from node A, the origin, to node D, the destination, without repeating ourselves, we could actually do that here. We could start at node A, move to node B, traverse to node C, and end up at node D. This is a simple path because we're finding a path through the graph, but we're not repeating ourselves by revisiting any vertices. Just for fun, let's look at one more type of path. There's another variation of a simple path that's actually called a cycle. A cycle is a simple path that ends with the same node that it began. So for example, if you start at node x and you want to create a cycle, you could start at node x, move to node y, traverse to node z, and end up back at x, thus forming the cycle and repeating the last node, which is the first node you started off with. So we now know that Euler was actually trying to find a simple path through his bridges. And we can actually use paths and cycles as a way of classifying graphs too. But how did he figure out how to turn his bridge problem into a graph problem? Back then, graph theory didn't exist. He invented it. But how did he go about doing that? To find out the answer to this question, tune in again for the next episode. Until then, head over to dev.to, sign up, and follow me at Vaidehi Joshi. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Heroku for sponsoring BaseCS. I'm Ben, one of the founders of Dev, and I want to give a shout out to Heroku, the platform that's allowed us to scale from zero to millions of monthly visitors since we started this venture a few years ago. We rely on Heroku's managed Postgres alongside the rest of their infrastructure to ensure reliability and flexibility as we scale. If you're looking to scale a complex web app without all the chaos, please check out Heroku. Thanks a lot.